Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, we have a special workshop uh, tonight called How to Find a Co-Founder and Build a Team for Your Tech Startup. So uh, today is 9 of July. It's our live broadcast workshop organized by Elegant Club. And uh, today we will speak about how to build a tech team, how to meet the right people to team up, and uh, how to make it all work. We have amazing speakers today, and uh, we have um, a two-hour session uh, full of insights from our um, amazing contributors of the workshop. So uh, first of all, um, uh, let me uh, uh, show our social media. We are online, so if you're looking for uh, social media channels, please uh, take a look at our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, or WhatsApp group in email. Can we take a look at this? Uh, can we show the, the social media, please, to the screen uh, from our presentation? Um, so, yes, we're just waiting for a few minutes to, to show up our presentation as we do it on, on live broadcast. Yes, so uh, one more time. Um, uh, this is our social media channels, and uh, this event is organized by Elegant Club. It's a community of digital tech entrepreneurs um, united by idea of building a tech startups for in the UK and all across Europe. And uh, this is agenda for our workshop today. Uh, introduction, uh, part one, uh, um, about uh, finding a co-founder, how to find a mentor advisor, and also um, how to organize the teamwork and uh, figure out the terms and conditions. And the second part of the workshop will be focused on the teamwork KPIs, um, figuring out the shareholding structure, and uh, exit strategy in some case studies. What I also want to uh, say to our uh, YouTube audience, so please uh, write down any questions, comments, as we um, do this event in live broadcast. And we have our experts connected today, so if you get any questions, uh, please feel free to um, ask the questions in real time and we will be able to answer. Um, so please let me introduce myself. My name is Slav Branovsky. I'm the founder of Elegant Club and Accelerator. I'm entrepreneur in residence of Brunel University London and inter international speaker and mentor at Heart Founders Lab. So you can find me on social media and please uh, feel free to connect me if you're interested. Um, so uh, now I would like to uh, connect our uh, first uh, guest tonight. Uh, it's Adel Bote, and I just need to double check if uh, Adel is online already. And uh, Adel, good evening. Oh, crap. Adel, going... you're already in live broadcast. No, good evening. Yet. Just hang on. We're just waiting for Adele while she's uh, managing her connection. And um, Adele Bot is Allergent Accelerator Mentor of Allergent Club. And she's expert consulting startups um, and she's based in the UK. So we are waiting for Adele, uh, our first guest. And um, yes, please, uh, just uh, let's wait for a while. And uh, first of all, um, I, uh, w we would like to touch very important uh, topic today about building a tech startup. And I just got the signal that uh, we already got Adele online. Adele? Sorry, Slava. Can you just repeat that? Can you just repeat that? Yes, Adele, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Great. Uh, Adele, uh, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. And it's a pleasure to have you uh, in our live broadcast workshop. So we just started our session and the beginning of our discussion today is about, you know, how to find a good co-founder uh, for a tech startup. But before to do this, 
we need to uh, maybe uh, kind of start from ourselves and uh, try to evaluate our uh, skill set, our experience and expertise and kind of to understand are we good, for, uh, uh, am I good founder to team up, uh, you know, am I a good person to work with. So uh, my qu question to you, if you can introduce yourself to our audience and uh, tell a bit more about what you do and also um, uh, tell me about your thoughts regarding how to evaluate, how to evaluate yourself and how to identify your strong skills and maybe some weaknesses and how to understand what kind of person you're looking for for a tech startup. You're just waiting for Adele. Well, we're just uh, trying to connect with her for the meantime and um, for the moment, I just uh, will will uh, start my, my session. Uh, so as as we discussed that it's very important, first of all, to evaluate yourself and um, make sure you're the right person to, to work with. So if you can uh, switch on the presentation, please, uh, if you can switch on the uh, for a moment. Yes. So um, it's very important to figure out first that you are the right person to work with and um, how you can do it is that, first of all, you can identify your uh, strong points, your skills, your expertise background and try to uh, remember uh, what was good in your previous experience and uh, background. Um, you know, what did you like in your, uh, you know, uh, previous work, in your teamwork? What was your strongest point and what you uh, probably didn't like? What you think is a bit tricky um, to do or maybe something you don't want to do? And then um, I would advise to ask yourself what I want to do and where I'm best and what uh, is my role in the startup can be and uh, also what are my good skills and what are also which skills uh, to improve and also which startup directions uh, you wish to delegate. And this uh, kind of the clear uh, piece of paper with uh, writing down on all of these things will help you a lot to understand what kind of the person you're looking for to team up. And um, uh, again, uh, what kind of the co-founder do you need? Uh, so uh, you definitely need a co-founder who will make actions and take responsibility for decisions. Someone who will be able to uh, be responsible, quick, uh, you know, a confidence to support you on your way and journey. And also, uh, before actually again coming back to the particular skill sets, we need to. Uh, I kind of refresh that the main startup work directions are focused on uh, product development and support, uh, business development and finance and marketing and sales. And it's, it's very important to kind of to distribute these roles and responsibilities across the team and um, find what kind of the people you, you need. Um, let's say if you're experienced in product development, maybe you're looking for someone with experience in business and marketing and sales and that's uh, kind of what we need to um, uh, kind of to, to think and reflect across our um, uh, research. And uh, then how to find the co-founder. Uh, what is important is to understand how, how basically to do it, how to attract these people. And um, what I want to say is that you don't find them, uh, you attract them. And uh, this is very important to remember that um, you uh, attract people you, you, you like to work with and uh, th the way you can do it just like to be uh, natural, just to do everything you enjoy and you like and uh, just to reflect your startup idea and your mission and vision. And also um, then uh, uh, before actually again talking to some people, it will be great to create a target profile of co-founder candidates. Uh, where you have a clear understanding of role, responsibilities, skills and expertise of candidate um, you know you expect to have and also terms and conditions. Are you looking for someone uh, to work remotely or in the office, uh, someone willing to work in part-time or full-time and also what are the financial conditions like equity, salary, bonuses, exit strategy. And the main question I think it's important to ask your um, potential startup candidate is to um, kind of ask 
why do you want to join a, a startup? And uh, please uh, don't be shy to ask. А бегущая строка откуда у тебя? Да, с Адель подключим, наверное. Бегущую строку отрубим. Right, thank you very much. Uh, welcome back for waiting. And we just um, continue our discussion today about building a uh, team uh, for a tech startup. And uh, we just um, discussed about importance to create a uh, profile of your target candidate for your um, team and in order to clarify the um, uh, the roles, responsibilities, and also terms and conditions. And that can be a written document or it can be uh, sort of the presentation, but what is very important is just to um, kind of have very clear, um, uh, to have very clear um, uh, discussion about that with your potential candidate. And uh, yes, uh, just uh, if you can give me a second, I also want to uh, double check if our uh, special guest tonight is available, Adel Bota from the UK. So we're just waiting for her to connect. So we're just uh, waiting for a few minutes. And in the meantime, as we discussed, it's very important to ask your target um, uh, candidates, uh, why do they want to uh, uh, join your startup? So, and uh, yes, please have very honest uh, dialogue with there. And um, also, if you can show the presentation to our attendees. So I'm just waiting for the moment. I'm just asking our engineering team to switch on the, the presentation. All right, so uh, we're just waiting for a while and um, uh, the main question uh, to discuss now is that where to find the co-founder, mentor and advisor. And definitely you can find the co-founder, mentor, advisor via your, first of all, personal network, uh, clients and experienced professionals, a uh, network of people you already probably know. Also, the good option would be to go to Accelerator, uh, to join some maybe university events and some, some lectures and about uh, you know, building a tech startup, and also to attend some offline and online events and conferences. And also, please don't be shy to um, try to connect to top leaders in the industry and um, uh, try to uh, reach them out via LinkedIn and so on. And also, I would like to ask the engineering team to switch on their presentation. I don't see it. So, yeah. Great. Uh, thanks a lot. And uh, now I would like to um, also check if the Adel bot is around. Uh, so, if you can connect with Adel. Adel, good evening one more time. Thank you very much for staying with us. Hi, good evening, Slava, and uh, sorry about that, but thank you for having me this evening. Right, uh, Adele, please, if you can introduce yourself, tell a bit more about uh, uh, what you do and how do you engage with startups. And also, my main question uh, for now is how to validate yourself before actually trying to find some, um, you know, other candidates for your startup. And also, um, you know, what are the first steps to do uh, in order to make this uh, research and hunting <laughs> for your uh, potential candidates for a startup? Sure. So uh, my name is Adele Botha, and I'm a independent healthcare IT consultant, a business innovation and mindset coach as well as a startup advisor, mentor, and judge. And my key area of focus, my key area of passion really is, is technology and innovation and especially design thinking. So I work a lot with startups around how to validate your business idea and how to use creative thinking um, and design thinking to, in order to do that. So tonight, tonight I'm gonna to talk to you about um, something that I'm very passionate about and that is really about self-awareness. and. To answer your question, Slav, I think it's really important that we speak about this because before we can even go out and find a co-founder, we really need to be able to know who we are. Right? We really have to know and be self-aware. There's three key aspects around this. The first one is really 
having self-control because we always kind of talk about what what does self-awareness really mean and the first one is really about self-control and self-control is when to know what to say and when to act and i think this is extremely important because this comes down to managing your emotions and and when we go out to look for co-founders it's really going into a marriage right this is going to be a long-term relationship and you'll probably spend more time with your co-founder than even your own partner so it's really important through this self-awareness that you you are very much aware of your self-control and it's it's a limited resource and this is where we need to have enough sleep have a good exercise regime eat healthy but we can manage and control our emotions because a lot of the time when you work with a co-founder you're going to have disagreements you're going to have areas where you're not always going to see eye to eye and if you are in this sort of overworked um emotional state and you're not you're repressing those emotions and not expressing yourself you might snap and react and it really is not healthy for a long term working relationship so that's the one key thing i want uh, you guys now to think about the second one is self discipline and we talk about this a lot when we especially entrepreneurs is how do we get up in the morning and do what we do and it's all about realizing that we we will be met with doing things that we don't like to do and we need to do those things first thing in the morning and this really ties in with motivation as well is we might be full of ideas and we just want to work on our actual product and the design but then there's still a business that needs to be run there's still paperwork and admin that needs to be done so if you can get that out of the way first thing in the morning it really allows you to to be mindful during the day be creative and you don't have that nagging feeling and voice at the back of your mind going oh I still need to do that but I might postpone it to tomorrow and then we sit with something like procrastination so that would be the second tip and then the final one and I'm going to put a link in the YouTube uh, for everyone that's joined tonight and you can actually go and do the self assessment yourself and this is about self perception um and this is really key because this is the ability of you knowing what your strengths and weaknesses are what are your key your key abilities um as a owner and a co-owner you need to know what am i good at and i need to find someone that can complement that we sometimes think we can do everything uh, but it's not necessarily smart and um and it's all about having your own self awareness and also having other awareness as we call it so in the link just after i've spoken to to you then i will post a um link for you guys to go and do the questionnaire where you can assess your own level of self awareness and it will also generate a link so you can ask someone else to report back on your awareness so you can see how other people see you as being aware and you will then be able to kind of find the key areas that you potentially might still need to work on Right, Adel, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, please stay with us and thank you very much for your contribution regarding, uh, you know, identifying your own skill set and uh, kind of the portrait and um, understanding how to find some other experts uh, for your team. So uh, please, um, uh, my announcement to our YouTube um, viewers, uh, feel free to ask or comment your questions to our experts online. We will be asking during this live broadcast, and also uh, thank you very much, Adele. Um, we will speak to you shortly today as well. So, if we can um, uh, show our to our attendees, uh, yes. Um, so, as we discussed, where to find the co-founder, and uh, what we're trying to uh, reflect is that you pre can pretty much uh, find them anywhere as soon like you reflect your uh, philosophy you know vision mi uh, mission and vision and also please uh, try to uh, kind of try uh, multiple uh, areas uh, try to go to some online events try to network uh, to visit some websites i um, this is just a few examples you can go to uh, you know uh, linkedin google for startups you can uh, and go to F success and many other resources. So, um, and uh, what I try to uh, again to repeat one more time is that it's very important to do not be shy and try to reach the top leaders in the tech industry. You can find them online. You can send them email or Twitter message in order to try to um, to connect and ask for advice. And that can be a very good starting point for your engagement. And um, as we are moving on, um, what a co-founder finding process looks like. Uh, so first of all, it's important to network and um, 
uh, ask people, uh, you know, uh, just uh, sort of the basic questions about what do you do, uh, what would you like to do, and also uh, maybe just to find some potential people to follow up. And then since you, um, you know, are kind of organizing the first meeting, you can uh, speak a bit more in details about your skills and knowledge, about experience you have, and also relevance to startup. And also uh, the main question I, I try to reference you one more time, uh, why a uh, person wants to join your startup? And also, um, if you see the interest uh, engagement, if you s if see that it's actually working, you can schedule a second meeting and uh, maybe to just dis discuss a bit uh, more in details about your possible trial uh, period when you can uh, try to work together or some trial terms and conditions and also some sort of the trying roadmap and plan. And also what is important is just to kind of to figure out your NDA, uh, you know, uh, terms and conditions because if you already built something, you just need to make sure that the person um, is not able to disclose the information about your startup or about other, you know, sensitive data. And also please, uh, before any serious agreement you do with your potential startup candidates, try to make a trial uh, validation and try to validate your teamwork and try to make sure that it's actually working. Uh, and uh, what is the um, good uh, checklist to discuss with your potential candidates? Uh, what are the personal short-term and long-term goals of the candidates and people willing to join your uh, startup team? What are the professional short-term and long-term goals as well? Um, it can be study, finding you know, some um, expansion of career or maybe something like that. And also, what is your super goal? It's very important um, to understand what is the main uh, mission of the, you know, someone. Like maybe someone wants to, uh, you know, support others, maybe uh, someone wants to make a lot of money. So uh, please try to ask these uh, questions to uh, the candidates. What is the main uh, goal of the life? Let's put it that way. And then uh, please try to make sure that the goal of your startup and maybe your goal is aligned to the goal of the potential candidate. And then if you see the synergy between uh, you and potential candidate on the personal level, uh, please uh, try to define uh, for yourself first of all and also with your uh, team what's a uh, startup super goal and what's your exit strategy what's the plan are you planning to uh, you know bring company to IPO do you want to make a leading company in the industry in certain niche um, you want to make a successful sale or what's the the main you know uh, kind of the target and also, try to identify what is currently missed to achieve your uh, super goal. Uh, what do you need? You need more resources, you need funding, you need uh, maybe uh, more work on R&D. And uh, also, what do you enjoy in your startup work most? Is it about, you know, um, kind of, uh, you know, the process, uh, the, you see the positive outcomes. What do you really like to, uh, to see as a kind of the milestones and the achievements in your startup journey? And please, uh, it's very good exercise to write them down independently and discuss with your team, existing um, uh, co-founders, but also uh, some potential candidates, just to kind of to see personal and professional goals aligned to you know the goals of the startup, because it's very also important to be able to differ your um, things, uh, you know, your personal uh, plan, your personal achievements uh, you want to, to come uh, through and also the goals of startup itself. And also again to see uh, the similarities uh, between the people. And also uh, what I want to, uh, you know, kind of to repeat one more time, there are so many influencing factors uh, which uh, can impact the success of your startup. It can be a uh, study, existing job, it can be some, you know, personal situation. So please uh, try to discuss with your potential and existing co-founders very carefully all of these topics in order, again, just to make sure you have clear understanding of the journeys of each other. And 
This is the uh, uh, just a co-founder trial um, scheme. You know uh, what time we discussed before that it's very important to validate your uh, teamwork and before actually trying to um, make uh, very long-term commitments. Please uh, try to make a very quick trial for someone you met, maybe you know recently. Uh, maybe just to make a one week work together and then uh, it should be something very simple where you discuss your goals and you discuss uh, some simple tasks to do together and you also create a um, you know, list of tasks for each of you. And then in the end of that week you're meeting up and you see uh, you know, what was achieved and um, who did what and how was it, how was the engagement, did you feel the nice communication flow or it was challenging, something went well or something not. And then if you see that uh, one week works well, then you can move to the next stage. Uh, try to work together for maybe the following months. And also see how do you align uh, to each other, how it works. Uh, maybe it's uh, just the simple steps about the product development, some R&D. And also if you see that it's actually working and it's going well, you can um, uh, create a, a bit longer period of possible collaboration and then uh, can be the kind of starting point to discuss your equity or you know commitments regarding the you know how do you structure your um, uh, equity or shares in your company and it's a very sensitive topic especially if you started building something yourself initially and then you're trying to uh, bring more people to the board and my advice would be before giving a promise to give, I don't know, 50% of your company to someone, if you already started to build your company, um, try to offer equity, try to maybe offer um, some option uh, ec uh, option uh, regarding the equity, saying if you achieve something together for the next uh, two, three months, uh, the person uh, joining the startup getting, I don't know, 10% of the equity of startup. And then uh, due to the uh, following um, goals and targets, uh, the person can get more and more. And uh, then uh, it's securing your position because you understand that uh, you know uh, you agreed based on your, your collaboration and your teamwork and you see the real-time progress. So you don't have to hope that something would work when you aim to team up with people, you will see it in real time. And uh, what is very important is to create um, a roadmap, a common roadmap across the main activities in your company like finances, or business development, marketing and sales, R&D of your product and just to put certain timeline um, milestones, uh, launching a campaign or building a product or uh, making investment rounds and also please it's very important to set deadlines deadlines for each of tasks and also to define who is responsible for each of the tasks as soon as you have that clear roadmap it will be quite easy to again to evaluate your teamwork and also to know who is doing what and also um, to make sure you make a good progress over the time and uh, I would like to double check with my uh, team uh, if uh, I can invite the Marka Poliafik, our next uh, special guest uh, tonight. Uh, Marka is allergen accelerator mentor, and um, I would like to see if Marka is around. So, Marka. Hi, Marka. Good can... evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, all is good, uh, Mark. Uh, thank you very much for joining us tonight. It's a pleasure to have you as always. Uh, please, I would like to introduce, um, please introduce yourself to our attendees. And also my main question for you now is how to validate a teamwork, how to make a teamwork trial and maybe uh, make these first basic steps when you found someone promising to join your startup, but you're not quite sure if it's going to work or not. So what will be a you know, secure way to uh, validate your first steps of teamwork together? Okay, thanks for your question. And first of all, let me say good evening to all of our audience and great to be here on board. And let's talk about the, the startups and maybe I will introduce myself first. Um, so I work in the corporate world and uh, my main passion is about uh, clean tech and sustainability. 
Um, so sector wise uh, and in terms of role, I've been working a long time within the energy industry in particular way in the analytical function. So I'm at a crossroad between the analytics strategy and finance. An interesting place where to be. Uh, but okay, let's focus on, on, on our uh, work trial and how to clue and how to sense the fact that we are going in the right direction. Well, as you said, we don't know the answer. When we start working, we cannot foresee very well the future. But that's why it's important to focus on the business planning up front. Uh, I'm sure uh, our audience has heard about the sentence, uh, uh, failing to plan equal planning to fail. So I think that the best and possibly the only realistic way to check that we are going in the right direction is to have a proper planning process, um, to have objectives, possibly smart objectives as they call them, and make sure that we up front, we know where we want to get. Sometimes uh, you see it happens there and this happens in startups as much as in large corporates. We start projects, uh, we start uh, uh, creating something, we have the ambition, uh, but then actually, do we exactly have a clarity about what we want to achieve? And I typically say to, to my mentees or when I work with startups, I say, okay, when it will be the time to review? In one month, two months, three months time, whatever that might be. Can we say actually if we achieved or not this objective? So that is where we talk about smart objectives making sure that we can review, verify, making sure that it's easy for everybody to say, we achieved this. So I think that is the best way alongside the business planning uh, to, to review our work and to make sure that we are going in the right direction. Now, this is the science part, but as I always say, and I remember uh, sometimes we have some nice chat about that, uh, yeah. Everything in the business world is a bit of art and a bit of science. So I mentioned the business planning, I mentioned uh, objectives and the smart objectives, and then I would say is the science part. But let's go to the art part. We are all human beings. We like to be engaged and we like to be motivated. So it's important that we build up uh, a very effective and fruitful communication process. Let's make sure with our team, with our colleagues, uh, the co-founders, for example, let's make sure that once a week, maybe, we can sit down, we might have a coffee, a beer, whatever that might be. Let's stay in an environment which is uh, comfortable. Let's try to keep the stress of the deadlines out and let's try to talk openly. Okay, how is it going? Are we working well? Are we getting toward the right direction? Are we getting toward the objectives that we set up at the beginning? But then I would say, are we enjoying? Because I think that really everything that we do in life, and this applies for our job, but this applies for our daily life, for relationship, for, for startups, for everything really, we should enjoy. If we don't enjoy the process, maybe there is something wrong that we should look at. So let's make sure that we communicate with our co-founders, with our team, and say, okay, are we enjoying the process? Is everything okay? So I would say this is the art part, or at least a part of it. I'm sure I'm not giving you a comprehensive list, but I hope I'm shedding some light on some of the elements. The science from one side, and the art of communication, open communication on the other side. And I hope that gives some uh, helpful insight on the process. Absolutely, Marco. Thank you very much for your contribution of our discussion. Please stay with us and uh, my um, a message to our YouTube viewers and other attendees. Uh, please ask the questions in chat on our YouTube channel, Elegant uh, Club. Uh, so our experts stay there online and I uh, can ask your answer your questions. And uh, we will connect with Mark one more time tonight um, with more discussions after. So um, thank you very much, Mark, one more time. Um, amazing contribution. And now we are moving on with our workshop. So if you can.
team to switch on the, uh, the presentation. Uh, so um, uh, what, um, what do we see? Uh, do we see the presentation? Correct? Um, yes, uh, so it's great. Uh, and um, what I discussed that uh, it's very important to, uh, when you're building a team, to consider not only your uh, people um, you intensively looking for to join your team, but all your customers, all your existing business partners, all your uh, mentors and advisors and freelancers and collaborators, they potentially can um, uh, become your co-founders. So that's why it's very important to uh, build a nice relationship with all your stakeholders and also just to make sure, you know, um, you, you maybe already have these people. So when you're in the position of trying to see who can be your co-founder, try to talk to your a mentor or advisor or maybe, um, you know, some customers from previous work in order to see um, if they, um, interested about what you do and maybe they already uh, very loyal to your activities and they're very loyal to your uh, projects and engagements. So uh, please um, uh, try to create that uh, structure of the existing uh, mentors, advisors, business partners, uh, investors and also see how can be potential uh, co-founder uh, who can join your um, team. and. Um, that's that that can be very helpful for you to understand and uh, let us to move on and what is the sign of good co-founder let's uh, check it out and um, the sign uh, of good co-founder is when you are not getting exhausted of waiting to get things done and um, uh, how to actually see it is that when you realize that there is a two ways communication flow in between you and other co-founders, uh, when uh, someone is taking initiative and taking the lead when it's needed and making some suggestions, and also when you don't have competition across your team and you have the common goal and we're coming back to this uh, discussion of the super goal, what all of your uh, team want to achieve and what is the super goal of your startup? And also you have the continuous learning that even uh, you, f you think and uh, your uh, team members think you're uh, super skilled, which is great, but it's continuous learning process. So please uh, try to find those, um, you know, um, uh, founders who are willing to team uh, to learn more. And also uh, the sign of good teamwork is when you don't have to chase uh, people to get things done. And when the process is joyful and productive, when you see the, the synergy on the you know, emotional level, but also you see the outcome as, as, a, as a KPI and target. And also, if you can't make something, you see that co-founder is sorting this out, that uh, someone is helping you with that and uh, making sure um, you know, it's delivered. Um, so, and also we need to take a look at the startup teamwork pattern that, um, first of all, the startup journey is the marathon journey. It's very long-term journey in order uh, to come through all these ups and downs to develop your product, to bring this to the market, to engage with investors, to get some, uh, you know, fundraising rounds, uh, and maybe to bring the company to IPO. It's maybe five, ten years of your future life and it's, it's going to be very a long journey. Uh, so, and uh, please, when you do with people, try to identify, uh, you know, what kind of the personality of the, your uh, your co-founders have. Uh, are they, um, you know, sprinters or are they likely uh, for ready for marathon? And it's totally fine if some people, they, you know, they really like very long tasks and some people, they really work in very short sprints. It's, it's great. Its question is to identify where you know you do that and where it's probably you know you're not the best it. And uh, a sprinted journey is, works well for very short-term goals and milestones across your startup development, uh, maybe day-to-day -day updates of your product development and so on. Um, you know, uh, long milestones and mo long achievements is about you know that next year probably you need to fundraise or maybe in two years time you aiming to take the market, uh, you know, the leading market share uh, in your industry or something like that. 
Uh, so, but for sure, it's very important to understand that we are not able to perform at 100% all the time. So uh, we need to split our long-term journey into very short-term, um, you know, uh, goals and uh, milestones where after that we can have some uh, rest, some um, time to get um, refreshed and also to think, um, you know, what to do next. So. Um, it's, uh, it's important to see that ha very, ha uh, very clear uh, milestone uh, list and uh, milestone graph where you're building a prototype, when you are building an MVP, then you do a product launch and make a sales. So it's a mixture of many things at the same time. So um, how to also validate your teamwork and also how to see that it's actually working is that um, you can create a special uh, spreadsheet of your uh, weekly plan uh, with your uh, team members and then um, you can take a look uh, what um, is need to be done for each of your co-founders uh, you know and what is the target and what is the actual goal and also please make sure you have the um, deadlines for each of the tasks and uh, that you have uh, uh, written outcomes and that works well for uh, validating your teamwork and also your tracking the teamwork performance um, and day-to-day -day, uh, activities. So if you didn't make it, please uh, try to make it and uh, try to uh, make it very precise regarding the clarity of the tasks and the deadlines and milestones you want to achieve. So the outcomes should be also very clear. It's not about I did uh, calls and I talked to customers. It's about how many customers you talk to you and uh, what was the outcome of each discussion and what is the following plan? What's the action plan for each of uh, these uh, meetings or uh, discussions you have? Have with your customers and uh, what is important also to understand about your teamwork and the challenges you may have uh, during your teamwork journey is that we have so many influencing factors affecting our teamwork um, study work uh, other businesses or maybe some other activities relationships of friends and family also house and personal issues or maybe uh, personal development and satisfactions the level you really enjoy your life and also the way you work um, you know the way you live uh, so when you observe that someone is not harm percent um, you know um, performing and maybe someone is not doing like a lot uh, in the certain time frame try to identify where is potential problem is coming from maybe you can identify that you need to uh, fix maybe you know uh, or help to fix maybe something uh, you know regarding study or maybe the challenge is coming from you know some friendship issues or family so please don't judge uh, very strong uh, from first impression when you see that some of your team works they are not performing well at some point and uh, please try to have this honest and transparent dialogue in between and uh, uh, make sure you understand what are the challenges are about and uh, now we have uh, also the list of incentives uh, for your team member. What is very important to understand, uh, what are the motivational points for each of your team members? Are they motivated by, uh, you know, financial outcomes? Are they motivated by having, you know, shares or equity of your startup? Or maybe they're looking for some bonuses in the end of reaching some goals. And also, uh, what is very important, and probably uh, some of you can think it's, uh, you know, it's not so important, but the reality it is, is to have emotional incentives uh, like a work recognition, achieved a milestone, awards or some awards for the good, uh, you know, day-to-day um, -day activities. And uh, it's important to uh, some of your team members maybe to get a special gift or prizes during uh, your teamwork. So please try to think not only on the material level about, um, you know, what is the motivational points of your team members, but also emotional. And for sure, it should be balanced. It should be, uh, you know, aligned to the goals of your uh, team members. And please to, uh, try to discuss it uh, in a very transparent way. You know, what, um, you know, what do uh, your uh, team members expect from you and from each other in order to make this process enjoyable? And um, as I said, sometimes it's very easy to say thank you very much, but it means a lot. So please try to 
I use even simple words and simple incentives uh, to uh, motivate and reward your team members. And uh, we have a special expert today about the teamwork. And I would like to ask uh, our team if our special guest is uh, ready. Marie Jarvinen from Amsterdam. Uh, she is a mentor of Allergen Accelerator. And um, I would like to uh, invite join our discussion. Marie, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you can confirm that you're able to hear me. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Great. Yes, all is fine. Uh, one more time. Thank you very much for joining our live broadcast uh, workshop. So um, as we discuss about some incentives in uh, teamwork and if we discuss about some, uh, you know, motivational points, how to uh, make sure our team members are motivated enough and also they uh, feel, um, you know, rewarded for the hard work. So, to uh, you, if you can give your insights about um, how to maybe they create, a, you know, the right incentives for your team, how to identify it correctly. And also, uh, what are recommendations about uh, team engagement and maybe gamification? Uh, maybe some, as I said, some small prizes, some small awards, small bonuses, or maybe the big ones. How to uh, make sure you do enough for your team as maybe the main founder and also it's balanced and you have some, some good outcome on the, in terms of the milestones and achievements of your tech startup. Mm -hmm. Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so thank you very much for having me. Um, as, as Slava said, my name is Mari and I am an organizational psychologist. So I deal a lot with uh, startup team issues and, and coach teams on different kinds of issues that have to do with the people in the team and, and all of the experts and also like Slava's presentation has been really, really insightful, I think, in, in terms of thinking about what to do to first of all attract those co-founders and then also to keep them and keep them engaged and i think really one of the key things here is that as a startup founder you probably don't have a lot of money so you're selling something else you're attracting people with something else and you're selling your vision and so you should first of all try to find people who believe in the same thing because then that will keep them attracted to that idea even if you can't pay them much um but then you I think you should also think about what do you want to motivate? Do you want them to be creative? Then you should then you should really kind of um, get incentives for bringing up the most ideas. You should create the safe space, not so that people aren't afraid of mistakes. If if you really value that they come up with new and exciting ideas, and then try to find a way to reward performance, like you just said, Slava. Um, different people value different things. And so really just talk to them. What would they value? Um, can, you, can you help them learn a new skill? Because you know, in startup teams, it's often the least incompetent person who does something. So maybe trying to find them a course that they could actually learn some new skill or, or get a new title or something like that. It's usually, doesn't have to be money every time. Kind of really find out like what makes each person tick and, and what would make them motivated to, to work really hard. Um, and also equity, of course, but that's more like in the in the money money realm of things. But you can do a lot without that. And then I think what you just said, um, the last thing uh, that really discuss openly about the engagement, because there's always different levels of commitment to to a startup. So there's the core, the, the passionate people who probably founded the company, own the company, and then there's levels beyond that. Um, and those people might be needed, but they might not engage at the same level. So kind of have an open discussion about what is expected, what are the roles, what's needed. And if somebody is um, kind of drifting away, then is that an okay thing for the team? Or, or should we try to pull them back and just kind of keep this constant dialogue going? Because it can be okay to be a little bit less committed than the founding team because Sometimes the founders think that everybody should be involved like 24 seven, like they are, but that's not necessarily the case. It could be really acceptable and, and good to have some people who are a little bit less committed, but still kind of do enough for, for, the, for the startup. So kind of really think about what you need and what people are interested in and, and 
find that level of balance in, in those things. And really create the like an inclusive culture that values different skills and, and figure out what makes up your culture so that people are attracted to that as well and not just the like the facts of the company, like with the money or, or something like that. Um, um, and then also I would say, yeah, gamification can be nice. It can be fine, fun to, to figure out some rewards. And it could be, uh, for example, I know this one startup who uses Dungeons and Dragons as a framework. So <laughs> they kind of emphasize that not everybody needs to uh, be good at the same thing, but they gamify learning new skills. So you can, you can get new abilities and, and then they have them all on a board. So you can see like, all right, so now this person has developed this skill and now, now this person is learning this skill. And then they um, found their own framework to, to do this. So I, I thought that was a really good idea because that kept everybody motivated, learning new things as well. Right. Uh, thanks a lot, Marie, for your um, contribution. Uh, I have just one more question regarding mm -hmm. the uh, team engagement. Uh, it's uh, it's probably you know easy to discuss when everything goes right. You have the good um, you know a progress with your startup development. My question: What to do for founder if something goes wrong? Um, and it's very d difficult to understand what's the problem. Is it the problem with incentives? Or maybe mm -hmm. someone, uh, I don't know, has other commitments or maybe there is lack of motivation or lack of knowledge. Uh, what to do? Uh, maybe, you know, it's time to go to teamwork mentor or expert <laughs> in order to make some external observation of some challenges or teamwork issues. Because, you know, we somehow also biased when we judge, you know, other, uh, you know, performance and other teamwork results. So what would you advise how to make it in an intelligent way and uh, also to make it work? It's not about, again, criticizing or uh, putting someone down. It's about making it work in a, in a good and positive way. Mm -hmm. So going to a coach is obviously a very good idea. And this is a, a lot of the, the startups I meet have these kinds of issues. It's often commitment. It's often something like this that's going on. But what I... Yes, we, Marie. We're just uh, waiting for Marie. We um, uh, expecting she will come reconnect to us very shortly. And uh, what I was asking, yes. Yes, yes, yes. If okay. You um, do you need me to repeat the, the answer? Yes, if you can make it one more time, please. Oh, of course. Um, yeah, so I was saying that um, going to a coach or a mentor is actually a really, really good thing because, like you said, it's an outsider's opinion and we get blind to our own own situations. But what I would really suggest is talk about these things before they happen. Kind of think about like what could be potential causes of conflict and then think about some system of solving them. Right? And then when you notice that you're getting to one, then everybody knows what to do. and. They can be like, hey, I see that we are now slipping into a conflict and we agreed earlier that we would do this. Can we can we start down this path now and then have a structure to it instead of just starting to argue and maybe raising voices and then somebody storms out of the room. So kind of think about a system before anything is wrong. I would say that's a really good plan for any startup. Thanks a lot, Marie, for your contribution. It's a pleasure to have you tonight. Uh, one more time, it was Marie Jarvin and from Amsterdam, our Allergen Accelerator mentor. So please stay with us and uh, one uh, time message to our uh, viewers on YouTube channel. If you get any questions about the teamwork and also how to make it work, please ask and uh, share your contact details to follow up and we are more than happy to answer your questions um, during our uh, workshop and after. And uh, we are moving on, if we can uh, make uh, the presentation uh, visible. Yes, great. Uh, so uh, what we discussed uh, with Marie is about incentives and uh, some uh, ways to uh, make sure the team is motivated enough to do the very hard job and the, the, the team building is very, uh, you know, not easy sometimes, especially when uh, you have very early stage of your startup and maybe a lack of cash flow or, you know, some resources. So it's really um, needs to 
be aligned with the you know super goal and the big wish to to make it together so uh, let's talk a bit about organizing the teamwork process so in order to organize your teamwork it's very important to make it uh, structured and planned so uh, what do I mean by making a structured plan first of all um, please uh, try to create a startup plan as we discussed about the milestones the three directions about uh, business development the finances marketing and sales product development and R&D. Also, please set targets, KPIs and deadlines about what exactly need to be done, who is responsible and what are the deadlines to uh, deliver. Try to investigate what are the incentives for each of your team members in order to understand, you know, what are they driven by, you know, what they, you know, will be pleased more uh, by what. And also, it's important to create a very uh, clear communication uh, agenda and schedule in order how are you going to discuss, do you have some daily calls or daily um, some uh, reports uh, across your team or you use some task management tool and it, what is very important is just to clarify the expectations when and how you're going to communicate across your team building um, startup development. And then uh, when you are working in a team, it's not only uh, important to communicate uh, according to proper agenda and schedule, it's very important to track and improve your <laughs> teamwork process. So maybe at least once a week you can have a very quick discussions, okay, what was good this week, what was not good, what you can improve, and also what is very important, incredibly important, is to ask who needs your support and maybe how you can help to other people across your team. So it's not about uh, sending uh, ping pong messages about, oh, you should do that or you expected to deliver it this day and so on. Maybe you don't know that a person, um, you know, a bit overwhelmed or maybe it's a bit tricky for someone to deliver particular tasks. So it's a right approach and a great approach if you can come and ask how I can help and what I can do for you in order to make this task done. Because you have the common goal. There is no point to make it, you know, uh, independently. And it's great also, it brings so much loyalty to your team if you see that someone is able to help you and you give giving back as well and you're supporting each other in a nice way. And what also need to remember that please define your team member who will be responsible for team building and work. Someone checking the agenda, uh, some phone calls or maybe communication flow. Someone responsible for general communication. It's uh, otherwise, again, it's, it's going to be a bit messy. So uh, please try to define who is responsible for scheduling calls or sending invitations or uh, defining the right uh, relevant task management tools uh, and who is keeping track what's going on. So uh, it's, it's great to have someone responsible for that. And uh, even if we discussed about that, what we discussed with Marvi as well, that sometimes teamwork fails. And um, why actually it's happening is uh, there are multiple reasons why. And what, why I, I really want to focus on that. The, the failure in a teamwork is the one of top three reasons of failure in a startup. So if you're not able to uh, make a good, great performance of your team, it will lead to your failure of startup. So that's why uh, let's just uh, reflect a few points. So when you don't have the teamwork methodology or plan, when it's not certain where do you have the goals and deadlines, it's becoming very messy. Second reason when it's uh, becoming a very challenging to organize your teamwork, when you don't have enough motivation or successful milestones you came through. And also when you don't have enough balance, maybe some, uh, someone in your team working 24 seven and you see that it's too much. So it's also very important to keep balance across your team uh, work and also make sure people are able to balance uh, across other, you know, life commitments uh, with family, friends, uh, you know, dealing with the study, other works maybe or other businesses. And also, the, one of the big reasons why the teamwork fails is then when you have a different targets and goals. And that's when, again, we're coming back to the beginning of our workshop when 
uh, it can happen and uh, the best way to figure it out is to start from the discussing about what are your goals, what are your targets, how the, our startup journey is aligned to your life and personal goals. And then it won't be surprised maybe in six months time when you already maybe build a prototype or a product and then you, real, you realize that actually you're moving completely in different ways. And uh, also what is important that, um, you know, when you're forming a team, uh, it's day-to-day -day learning process and definitely we not always know everything. So it's um, the reason of failure is one of them is the lack of knowledge and skills. But it's not the, an issue, the issue when you are not ready to learn or you are not ready to move forward. So what is important is to get that, you know, the mindset of learning and supporting each other and giving the bit of knowledge to each of your team members in order to help them to understand, um, you know, what are the skills and expertise you aiming to get as a team. And as we discussed, if you have communication issues, someone is not responding to your phone calls or text messages or not appearing during your meetings, or virtual or real ones, so definitely it fails to the uh, lack of satisfaction and uh, some kind of misunderstanding and miscommunication. And also, uh, there are a bunch of the reasons uh, beyond just your teamwork in a startup, which can have a strong impact on your overall performance. As we discussed before, some health issues or some personal challenges. So especially during the current situation, during the, this year, as all of us, we have some challenges uh, across all these uh, sides of our life. So please have a very transparent discussion with your team members. And uh, as I mentioned before, the top reasons for failing a startup, team, product, sales. Uh, so the team is one of the top three. Um, and uh, when we discussed uh, about the validation of your teamwork and we discussed about finding the right people, it's also, um, you know, maybe you, you got a few months of teamwork together, or maybe, you know, just a few weeks. Uh, the top question, and this is very tr frequent question I'm also hearing from some of uh, startup founders, how to make a final decision that's, uh, that's, that person is the right person to um, uh, join our team. And uh, it's, uh, it's very quick quick test or maybe quick, uh, you know, um, answer. Uh, please try to imagine that you are going to work with that person for the next five, 10 years of your life. And the question, are you ready to see these candidates or, uh, you know, uh, your team members in the next 10 years of your life? Are you happy by, by imagining this or you think it's too much or maybe you're already um, feeling that you not uh, you don't have uh, you know common goals and visions so if something is not working now it would never come to the point that it will get better so it's very important to know that even you spend uh, I don't know a few weeks of your uh, common uh, teamwork together that you like it you enjoy and you see the results of it if you see that the people you know are not nice with you and they are arrogant they are not polite they maybe you know have lack of you know education at some point so please uh, you know don't uh, spend your time of trying to build the team with such people and try to find those the best ones you're happy to deal with and uh, in order to make the final decision about your teamwork, uh, please make analysis of your traction, how you know you performed as a team. Also, uh, try to clarify all the terms and conditions uh, in order to understand again what's the equity structure, who is getting what, when, if uh, someone is uh, get paid when and how. And also try to create a long-term roadmap in order to understand, uh, you know, as we discussed, the, the milestones, the, the goals you go together. And it's very important also if, especially we speak about the equity, it's important to create uh, legal agreements uh, where you set up the equities and you set up all these responsibilities, who is responsible and what for. And that decision can impact the rest of your life. 
So it's very important just to make sure you think twice before you make a final confirmation and say, yes, we are working together as a team. It's, it's, very, it's probably harder than marriage, honestly. And uh, yes, so um, we have a uh, very frequent question as well. A lot of uh, startup founders, they think, uh, well, I know everything or maybe I already developed the product. Why do I need a team? I can be, you know, the sole founder. I can do all myself and can get all the money to myself. In reality, it's, uh, I don't know, 99% uh, 99 never works. And the reason why, because the sole entrepreneur is not scalable to deliver all these goals and targets, um, you know, uh, which you probably put to your roadmap. So um, still definitely you can deal with people on maybe paid basis or you can attract some freelancers uh, to work with you. But there are a few points which uh, need to be, again, checked several times before you're making this decision to go as a sole founder. And again, just to clarify, sole founder doesn't mean that you're able to work alone. So founder is when maybe you have, I don't know, 100% of equity of your startup or maybe a bit less, but at least you consider yourself as the leading person in your team. Uh, so in order to be a sole founder, first of all, you need to have a solid expertise in the field and resources, uh, strong leadership and organizational skills, ability to learn more uh, than to lead uh, because it's very easy to uh, consider yourself as a big boss, but it's, it's much more important to uh, consider yourself as a non-stop uh, learner or non-stop um, you know, person willing to learn and uh, to get some new knowledge. And also, strong advisory board must have. So advisors, mentors, uh, business partners, all of these people, they, are, uh, they all are your team. And uh, just to remember, harm percent of zero evaluation of your company, it's not good. It's better to have 50% of one billion company, isn't it? So, uh, and also, what is the good point of uh, someone interested to join your team? Is a good sign that someone believes in your startup idea, or believes in your project, and uh, try to think twice uh, again before thinking a goal as a sole entrepreneur. And it's much more enjoyable process and joyful process to build something together with your potential um, founders, co-founders of your team. And now uh, I would like to check if uh, I can invite our experts, uh, Sharon Wright um, from the UK. Sharon is allergenic serrata mentor and advisor, and she has multiple of uh, experiences across, um, you know, the startup development and also established company and attraction. So, Sharon, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us uh, tonight. If you can introduce yourself, also tell a bit more about uh, what's your background and experience. And uh, my question for you uh, now. As we discussed, it's very hard to uh, be a solo founder and uh, run a startup if you're just alone. So um, it's coming to the point most of the times that you need to scale up your team and bring more people to your um, startup. So my question, how to understand, um, you know, how many people do you need? Uh, is it like good mixture to have uh, three founders or maybe five or maybe 10? How to understand that you really need to scale up? What is the trigger to understand? Maybe, you, you know, you two of you for the moment or maybe three, but what would be the good sign of uh, idea to start scaling up process and also how to make it? Uh, you know, uh, would you suggest you again to go to recruitment, uh, you know, companies to make your own research? What would be the good uh, strategy to scalability of your startup team? Hi, Slava. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks. Okay. Um, just a little bit then, um, yeah, my background is um, Nike and Adidas, um, 17 years uh, across multiple functions, but I think um, the most relevant is around the go-to-market. Um, and I've found since I started my own consultancy business and, uh, is that's the side of it that 
has been key. So going back to the model where you have those three key pillars, they are the core fundamental for me. So, you know, you've got the product, the business development, the finance side, and then the marketing and sales. And if you can be really strong across those areas, then marketing is obviously a huge area. And I think the biggest thing people in is they see it as a cost and not a revenue driver. And, that, and they don't actually recognize it as part of the core that actually is to the senior leadership team and foundations of the business. And it's worth noting that at that very, very early stage, because if you can get someone who is experienced enough to be able to do the strategy and the plan on finance and product team, that's in the employing the people to do the actual execution of that is much, much easier than actually getting that part right at the beginning. Because when you're a startup, you're ultimately going to in terms of that product person working directly with the marketing and sales team to actually keep adjusting what that messaging is, adjusting where that channel is, um, and adjusting also where that budget is. Because one thing you'll find is if I look back to where, okay, working for these multi-billion companies and you've got big budgets, once you get to that scale, which I'm sure everyone listening is gonna have that aspiration to get to, you are then starting to internally pitch for budget and fight. So you become learning that now, actually on your skills going forward. I think what I've found with the stuff I've worked with is they think desperately they should be on this channel and we need to be spending money and we need to get awareness and awareness is absolutely key and I'm not saying that it isn't. You can have the best product in the world, but unless you're actually out there creating awareness, creating interest, creating that conversion, you're never going to get repeatable scale. So it's key that you don't just dive in. And it's key that you actually plan that and plan that effect. Right. And I have a one more picky question to you, if possible, because um, as you know, it's, it's very critical for a startup to have a you know, relevant marketing strategy and to establish sales process. And uh, it's not quite certain for, uh, you know, for some startup founders what is the good um, approach, uh, for example, when you need to uh, make more sales or maybe to add some new marketing channels, is it good to uh, go to some marketing agencies or companies and someone from external, um, you know, kind of the, the world and to, you know, build that relationship and the partnerships, maybe some marketing agency, or it's much more um, important to, you um, uh, build that expertise inside of your team and, uh, I don't know, maybe save up money and maybe, uh, again, be more aligned to the big change, uh, to quick change and also to save up money regarding the expenses on marketing. So what would be the good approach to go to outsource or to try to make this work inside? But I believe it's also very challenging. Yeah, it is. And I think it comes back to really, truly knowing who your customer is and where they are. And once you understand that, because obviously at that point, you're trying to prove something. You're trying to... All right. Uh, it seems like we lost uh, Sharon Wright because it's uh, our live broadcast. So. Uh, we will wait for her uh, coming back uh, due to the, maybe some a lack of internet connection. But what we discussed that uh, it's very important just to figure out uh, what's the good balance between the uh, bringing some external experts in marketing or some inside of the team. So yes, we have one more time. So Sharon, yes, if, if you can repeat your answer, please. I think where I would invest is certainly in someone that can do strategy and planning and part of your core team. 
because what they can do is they can then follow on obviously that branding, that strategy, that mission, and then all the budget management and all working with the, the product teams as you evolve. So I think you absolutely 100% need that internally because otherwise what will happen when you go to agencies, agencies will never understand your brand who have budgets you know ones from 500 pounds a month just to manage your social media and um, right the way up to I mean thousands a month you actually do a lot more than that and that's just social media that's not everything else that goes into you know the marketing as an actual a, a part of key business so I think you need to establish it internally because that person needs to be there for the long haul because they're actually that person that's managing that brand keeping it on what the mission is, and yet the strategy change in terms of product pivot, um, but your mission and where you're actually going will not. So that marketing side of it will, you need that internal. So I see so many people um, having wasted lots of thousands of pounds a month internally, um, because they've not truly known who their customer is in the first place. Um, and I can certainly do, send some links to that. There's some competitor analysis and some good sources free that you can actually spend some time on internally. And, and that's what it takes. I mean, if you're going to be an entrepreneur and in this and you're part of that core foundation team, it's rolling up the sleeves and getting into doing this stuff. You know, your product team, your product manager is going to be a key per finance person because you then need to start putting those metrics in place. How many leads do I need to actually make it work? And then if you start reverse engineering that, you're going to know where your costs and where your budget is going to be as well. Yeah, I would. Sharon, thanks a lot for your contribution. And uh, it was Sharon Wright uh, online uh, from the UK. Sharon uh, Wright is our Elegy Accelerator mentor. And my message to our uh, viewers and attendees of the online workshop, if you get more questions about the marketing you know, or maybe how to uh, bring the relevant uh, team members in marketing, please uh, write comments in uh, our YouTube channel uh, chat and uh, Sharon will be able to answer you and uh, please leave your social media contacts or emails so we'll be happy to follow up with your um, questions. Let's come back to our discussion and uh, what we have here is that uh, if you can take a look at our presentation is that um, it's very important to clarify all the terms and conditions with your team members and also to clarify the duties, responsibilities, liabilities, equity or options for equity and also assets, ownerships and also agree on exit terms and conditions in case you aim into um, work with certain people as a team but you're also thinking okay what happens if someone would decide to leave company or start up I don't know in one year time so please write it down and make it very clear what would be you know uh, you know all the terms and conditions for exit and also uh, regarding the the, the cases, how it would work. So what does it mean um, if the person can leave the company and keep the equity or if someone is leaving your company in the next two weeks, it's, there is no way to keep the equity as well. So please uh, uh, write it down. And um, also, as we discussed, it's very important to align your uh, exit strategy with your team members. Where do you go? You aiming to take an IPO or you want to leave at some point, you want to make a sale, you want to make an uh, acquisition of some other companies. And what would be the terms and conditions of each of your team members if you decide to exit? And what would be the asset ownership? So please align your team uh, exit strategy with your team members in order to make sure uh, you uh, have, you know, it's cleared. And also, um, uh, 
Yes, it's, it's actually uh, very uh, challenging and uh, what I also want to reference uh, here is it's very important to uh, remember that uh, every milestone, every, every success of your startup is always a team of work, it's not individual and even you think again you have, you do maybe, I don't know, the most of uh, your work but still um, your business partners, your investors, your mentors and advisors, they do so much for for your success, even maybe more than you can imagine. So that's why it's very important to get that mindset um, understanding that, uh, you know, it's not a competition across your team. It's not, you know, the journey of being alone or forever. Its idea is to uh, find this uh, bright talents uh, to align uh, your goals and you know targets together and just to, to go uh, with your startup journey in long run and it's not easy for sure and as we discussed it's uh, it's very challenging and um, uh, what is also one of the you know maybe the good signs of your teamwork when you are not focused on uh, trying to solve your team management issues or trying to find who did what and when when you really focused on execution of your startup when you really focused on achieving some goals and targets and uh, another topic which I really want to touch uh, this time because now we in this challenging times in 2020 when um, some of startups they have to work completely re in remote mode uh, some of team members they're not able to travel or maybe to see each other due to some social distancing so um, the main challenge is also uh, to keep that engagement uh, maybe you, uh, previously you was able to work in the office and maybe you had you know regular meetups in the some co-working space what is the challenge now is that if you're not able to meet uh, your team members uh, in the same you know, schedule as it was before, even more than before, it's critically important to keep that engagement and uh, motivation and support each other. And um, some things probably are not going to be visible for you now because you are not seeing these people, uh, you know, on uh, day-to-day activities. So my advice would be, again, just to create a sort of the weekly uh, call or maybe weekly um, meetups to discuss about the challenges, about the teamwork, how you can support each other, what's the plans, and maybe also to find some incentive to celebrate, to make some online party, just to kind of to spend a bit more time together when you definitely spend now less time. And uh, coming back to this remote work as we all move to this uh, digital space, it's incredibly important to use a uh, task management tool to track uh, you know uh, who is doing what to have the right communication channels uh, use uh, some messengers and some uh, video conference calls and even uh, you know, uh, coming back to my experience, video calls can be very exhausting, but please uh, try to make a video calls instead of the phone calls because sometimes, uh, you know, you can see that person is not feeling good or maybe, uh, you know, not so happy. Again, you can observe and see how you can support the person um, to make uh, something together. If you speak uh, only uh, by text or phone, it's not um, enough to understand if something needs to be fixed. And so please, my, my big advice, just to keep that regular and consistent. So uh, your team uh, should feel that you have the regular meetups and discussions, so they're not alone on the, while they're doing some regarding the marketing or R&D or anything else. And it was Adel Botter from the UK, Elegant Accelerator Mentor. What we discussed today is about how to build a team, but also what is the action plan to uh, start building your team and how to keep that energy and motivation for yourself. But what is most importantly to bring that energy and motivation to other team members. So thank you very much, Adel, one more time for your amazing contribution tonight. It was Adel Bota. Thank you very much for watching us. If you get some question to Adel, please uh, leave a comment on our YouTube channel to reply and we will be able to reply uh, during the live broadcast. We will have a quick um, uh, pause to now and uh, we have a next guest, uh, Marka Poliafika, joining us um, 
very shortly. Uh, so uh, we just uh, need to double check the connection with uh, Marco Poliafica, Legend Accelerator Mentor. And I have a special question to Marco as well. And um, yes, we're just waiting for a quick connection to Marco and we just uh, need to make sure um, that we able to hear and see Marco. And uh, today, as we discussed uh, about the team building, about the challenges, and also how to make it all work, what would be the action plan to, to make it work. Um, yes, we're just about to connect with Marco Poliafica, Allergen Accelerator Mentor, to join us for second contribution to our discussion about um, about teamwork failures and uh, when to give up and when to um, keep doing. So what are the hints when you need to stop working with some people and maybe uh, when you still can do it better? And also, what would be the adv uh, advice regarding the success factors of teamwork? How to make sure, again, you ticking the boxes and you're making the right steps when you're building your team. So uh, I just want to have a uh, last uh, session with Marco Poliafica and discuss with him our teamwork uh, challenges. Uh, Marco, can you hear me? Can you confirm that you're able to hear me? I can hear and see you. Can you hear and see me? Right, uh, right, uh, Marco, thank you for joining us uh, for a second time tonight. It's a pleasure to have you. What uh, we discussed today, it's about the different aspects of building a tech team, uh, you know, incentives, the KPIs, the building the roadmap, it's all great. And with uh, Mari, uh, before we discussed about what if something went wrong and uh, it's a way maybe to uh, advise some coach or mentor uh, to help to you know optimize some teamwork and uh, make sure it work. But uh, I want to ask you a very tough question. If we observe some teamwork failure, when it's time to close your door or still give a last chance to your teamwork and maybe say, okay, I still believe in the team and I still think we can do it together. So how to make a difference between uh, startup failure and teamwork failure? Because uh, you can have a failure in a startup, but it's not always failure in a team, if you know what I mean. And uh, what would be the approach to make that um, kind of decision making points? It's a failure of team or maybe it's something else and you can keep your team and uh, keep doing your development. Uh, thanks, Lava. Thanks for the tough question, uh, but also a great one, uh, because as a matter of fact, failure is part of the journey. Uh, so I would say that is the first important point. Accepting the failure can be part of the journey. It doesn't need to be, but it can be, and most likely it will be. Um, there is uh, something to say about failure, and uh, and it's about the the process. Uh, I will go back to what actually how you phrase the question, but in the second part of my answer, uh, before when we we're talking, I started from the science and I went to the art. This time I'm doing the opposite. I start from the art, and that's why uh, I think I like to quote uh, a couple of things there. Uh, I think we already have heard about uh, the fact that we never fail, we win or we learn. And, and that is the first important element to consider. Really, the failure should be accepted as part of the learning process. And the decision-making process, which is uh, strictly connected with the failure and, and the creation of the startup, they all together are part, very important core pillars of the creation and the scale-up part, and even the business planning, as a matter of fact, of, of the startup. Uh, I think there's no need maybe for me to quote the, the famous stories. I mean, we, we might have all heard about Elon Musk. Uh, and you asked before, okay, should we stop or when is the right time to quit? Well, there is no a scientific answer there. There is only an answer dictated by the passion, by how much we believe in what we are doing. Um, I think we have heard about Elon Musk going uh, uh, with his uh, SpaceX, going badly wrong, actually, the first and the second time. And if we remember the story, uh, he said actually during a few interviews, 
uh, that he, that was his last chance. He didn't have any more money, he didn't have any, any more resources to go ahead. And the last time, it worked out. So I don't think there is a scientific answer there, but let me remind another story, actually, that is possibly less famous than the one uh, of, of Elon Musk. Um, we might remember that Thomas Edison uh, invented the, well, invented, he came up with, uh, with a light bulb. And, uh, and actually, there is a famous story going ahead because uh, Thomas Edison, he made it, the story goes, that he had about 10,000 uh, trial and failure. And at the, after 10,000 times, there are different versions of the story. Sometimes somebody says 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. So let's appreciate not the number, but the story, the meaning of the story. And he was interviewed afterwards. Uh, and somebody said, oh, gosh, after 10,000 times, you made it. And Thomas Edison replied, well, I ran out of options that could go wrong. <laughs> so uh, I think from point of view, while there is not a specific scientific answer to when is the right time to quit, I think the right answer can only come from our heart, from the bottom of our passion and belief that we have in our idea. And that is the first part of my answer. But if I still have time, please stop me if that is not the case. I, like, I would like to go more on the scientific side now, on the managerial side, and link the failure to the decision-making process. So let's see what advice could I feel to share with, uh, with, with our audience. First of all, the, the failure, as we say, is a learning opportunity. I wouldn't say let's embrace it because, of course, we don't like it. <laughs> but as a matter of fact, it's the truth. We should accept and appreciate it as part of the learning journey. And this is what we say so far. But let's, let's focus on three points. I think the first one, the first one is uh, define the failure. W what is failure for you might not be failure for me. Is it failure not be able to perform a certain number of sales? Or is it failure not be able to go out to the market with a product? So if we clarify, uh, and as a matter of fact, when we, we had a chat before, I mentioned about the importance of having uh, smart objectives up front. If we have a clear definition of what is success, as a consequence, we can define what failure is. So first element, let's define failure. Let's be clear that we cannot mess around when we complain or we want to give up. Is it really a failure? The second point, the second point is about uh, analysis. You used a, a great verb when you posed your question, how do we observe? Now, I say this so far that uh, entrepreneurship is a great learning experience. Um, the problem is that very often we focus on the outcome. Now, focusing on the outcome leaves uh, hidden so many other things. Uh, the role of chance, lack or no lack, um, externalities, uh, COVID, uh, the process behind, the biases. So there are a lot of elements that are hidden and they are embedded in the de decision making process. But if we stop by looking at the outcome, we cannot actually learn properly. So what is the trick? The second part of my answer or my list of three points is observe and analyze. There is an interesting story that I'd like to share about the importance of analyzing and analyzing the failures and the success based on what we defined. So let's go back in time. During the First World War, uh, helmets have been introduced to avoid, uh, to avoid uh, basically uh, casualties. So what happened is that uh, because of people now wearing helmets, the hospitals started tracking so recording basically a lot of injuries and they say what's going wrong what's wrong going wrong i mean we introduce helmet to protect people and now we have a lot of injuries but is that a failure or was it a, a, a success as a matter of fact all those people that now were injured before they were all dead so the second point is we need to learn to analyze both failure and success 
because as a matter of fact, we need to understand the process behind. If we clearly define the failure and success, we can then um, aim to digest and inform our decision-making process. What looks a failure in that case was actually a great success. So, defining, learning is the is is the second part analyzing sorry analyzing as a matter of fact and the third part i anticipated is a learning but learning from both failure and success we typically learn from outcomes as i said before and we it's easy understandable that we learn from success as a matter of fact the learning from only failure or from success only it's a suboptimal in our decision making process we should uh, um, have a robust way to analyze failure and success, the process behind them, and then compare in order to be able to analyze what is the difference, what caused, what brought us to a failure or to a success. So, define, analyze and observe in more analytical way, and third, learn from both of them together. That is my advice to uh, link failure to the decision-making process in a very strategic way and I hope that helps our audience. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, thank you very much for your contribution and uh, staying with us uh, tonight. Amazing uh, discussion we had today about uh, startup team building and figuring out how to make it all work, how to keep the motivation and energy going on, how to uh, scale up your team, how to make a final decision about uh, bringing some people to your uh, startup journey. And one thing I want to uh, mention uh, before we finish our session tonight is that, you know, I think it's very important to look a bit beyond just one uh, startup journey. If you met some great people to work with, um, you know, you can probably fail in a startup, but it's very important to keep your relationship with the people you really trust, the people you really uh, like to work with, and you really want to keep this going in the long run. So it's not a problem if you, you know, didn't manage to succeed in one particular startup, but if you have amazing team and you know that you love working with, with these people, so then you can uh, build your own company, a new company, or start a new startup, or do something else together. So it's much more valuable to keep your relationship uh, as a startup team rather than keep your startup and destroy your relationship of people you really trust and you really want to work with. So please don't forget about this. And that was our live broadcast workshop, how to build a tech startup uh, and how to build a team in a tech startup and also how to find the right people um, for uh, a co-founder um, candidates. So amazing contribution. Thank you very much to our special experts tonight, Sharon Wright, Marco Poliafica, Adel Bote and Marie Jarvinin. So uh, we had insightful discussion. Please, if you get more questions, follow us on social media or visit our website, elegant.club, and uh, also leave your comments in our YouTube channel. So we are happy to follow up and uh, answer your questions later on. Just a quick update. If you can take a look at our uh, presentation, if you can switch on our presentation to the screen, please. Um, just a, a few things uh, to mention about the next uh, events and activities we do online in live broadcast uh, uh, formats. So uh, in July, we have a special um, meetup, a special event, Meet a Mentor Advisor for a Tech Startup. It's going to be an online speed dating event next uh, week. Uh, 16th of July. Please uh, visit our website to book a ticket. It's going to be an amazing session with our mentor where you can meet some uh, people who can help you to make your startup journey successful. 
And uh, as we discussed before, Allegiant Club is a community of tech entrepreneurs in the UK and all across Europe. So if you're feeling lonely, if you need some support and guidance on how to make it successful, please join our community, visit our website, and we are more than happy to um, help you to make your startup journey together. So you're more than welcome to join. We also have a special accelerator program for uh, early stage startups. If you're looking for a sustainable support uh, through our accelerator program, please take a look and see it via elegent.club slash accelerator. If more questions, uh, feel free to email us info at elegent.club or visit our website or social media. Thank you very much one more time. My name is Slav Bronowski. I'm the founder of Elegent Club. One more time, uh, we had an amazing uh, workshop how to find a co-founder for a tech startup and build your startup team. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for more updates. See you next week. we